like pride makeup for June. This vlog is going to be inspired by my childhood reads. I have a pile of books that I want to read and I'll just pick them out as I go and talk to you about each one. We're going to start off with The Red Pyramid by Rick Riordan. I don't have a physical copy, I did listen to it on audiobook. And this book was something that I hired out when I was in primary school. I probably would have been in like grade four, I think. Yeah, maybe seven or eight. A lot of people know of the Percy Jackson series. I started with The Red Pyramid. I started with the Egyptian theme instead of the Greek theme. I do not remember this book at all. Honestly, I think I hired it out and like pretended I read it. <laughs> this follows two siblings who have not grown up with each other. So one um, helps his father doing excavations and then the other sibling like, grew up with their grandparents and lives in England. So their mother has passed away and it begins with them, the father taking them to the museum and they spend the rest of the novel looking for their father he goes missing. It's very cool in the sense of their parents aren't gods but they're from a long lineage of magicians. They follow like this shenanigans you know basic required an adventure story. I think when I read it back in the day I did enjoy it. Like if I did read it I definitely would have loved it. I don't know why I have absolutely no memory of this book like it actually bothers me. But yeah so that was the first book that I had read. Hello, angle change. This book, picture this. Year six, I had just finished Twilight. We we're going into year seven, new high school life, new library that I get to look at. So we go into the supernatural section. We look for an, the next hot vampire book possible. A lot attempts of being Twilight. And this was one of them. This is called The um Evermore from the Immortal series. As the title says, Immortals is a book about immortal people. Now, young me, got to about this far and when they said immortals instead of vampires I was like I'm not reading this book anymore so um I did not read I just terraformed <laughs> did I take my entire personality from the first five pages of this book <laughs> there is already a Hilary Duff reference and a Marilyn Manson reference I mean, I'm kind of disappointed that they're referring to Hilary Duff in a negative way because she's iconic and an absolute queen. God, I'm cringing. Sorry, I both relate and I'm also cringing like crazy. <laughs> I am remembering things from this book. Um, I also had a dream that I had finished it, so when I woke up to realise that I only got this far last night, I got upset. <laughs> but I'm remembering what happens. She is the one who reads minds. She can like see people's auras and like the color that they are. The gay representation I wouldn't say is the best. Although they're like a group of three friends, you don't really see him talk to the other goth one who is her only, her own, like the other friend, her only description is the goth one but also she doesn't like being goth, she just does it for attention, apparently. And then we inter get introduced to the male, like the love interest, who we all know is going to be a vampire, like, it's just facts. Um, he is like described as exotic, and I don't really know what the fuck that's supposed to mean. This far into the book, <laughs> and now I've got this little bit left. Um, some big plot points have been like exposed and stuff. It very much like really deals with um, not doppelganger but like reincarnation, which I think is cool. He's like, "Do you love me?" and she's like, "Um, <laughs> what?" <laughs> For some context, everything has changed now. So like the main like the goth Sheila, she was kind of a shit friend. Just the only thing that was interesting about her was that she was goth. She's now no longer goth, she's completely changed her cl um, clothing and now she's just completely ditched it all together. She's dyed her hair brown, she's wearing like preppier clothing and both of them, like even the blonde bitch, the main character, she's like changed her style back to being more like feminine. So I was like, are they really going to undo every single thing that we've learnt about each character and been like, they're just not like that anymore, they've just changed. Honestly, this is probably why I stopped reading it. There's nothing wrong with being girly. It's just I hate that they make it such like a huge difference. Like, she can enjoy wearing baggy hoodies and still be cute, you know? Being like, pick me energy. I'm not like other girls' vibes. It's finished. 
I kind of hated it. But also I was sucked in so I can't, couldn't have hated it that much. Um, it's probably like a two stars. Old me would have hated it but also loved it at the same time. Like this is definitely guilty pleasure level book. I just went shopping and I picked up an electric blanket and also a weighted blanket and since the weather is terrible right now I'm going to put on an audiobook and make my bed. Um, this one is, I ended up downloading Angus Thongs and Full Frontal Snogging, which for anyone who knows, I think it's, the series is called Confessions of Georgia Nicholson, which is from the movie with Aaron Taylor Johnson, my baby. Um, I have read this book before. I haven't read the rest of the series and I kind of want to, so I'm just going to start listening to this and make my bed. So cool. Angus Thongs and Full Frontal Snogging by Louise Renison. Read by Louise Renison. I may kill myself. He doesn't seem to realise that I no longer wear romper suits. I feel like yelling at him. I'm 14 years old, Uncle Eddie. I'm bursting with womanhood. I wear the bra. I definitely wasn't like, I'm busting with womanhood. I'm only up to chapter four. And I'm like, should I just not read this? Georgia is so fucking frustrating. And I've read this book before, so I knew that, like, I know that she's annoying. But I didn't realise how bad. I've read it previously back in high school. I read it when I was actually, like, 14 or maybe around about the same age group as this main character actually is. A lot of it you can toss down to being, like, childish. And that's why I didn't like the other Sheila is because she just was kind of a bit childish. Whereas this, this character, I actually want to, like, square up. I want to fight her. She is so infuriatingly rude to everyone. Um, every sentence that comes out of her mouth is offensive. You are just so negative. Like, I just want to fight her. How, when did this book actually come out? So I can know for context. This book came out in, oh, 1999. So I was born. <laughs> this book came out when I was born. Oh my God. Someone commented, they rated it four stars though. They were like, um... For, recommends for those in good need of good luck. Every time I reread this book, they turn out to be offensive in more and more ways. I can't imagine this book getting a print on it now, and yet it is pure comedy gold. Everyone's like she's the epitome of teenage girls and the cusp between childhood and adulthood. In my experience, I guess my experience was entirely different. Just what this age group, like she's supposed to be 14, right? When I was 14, yeah, I was depressed and I was moody. But I was no way this disrespectful and rude to minorities. And, like, I definitely, personally, was not one who, like, made rude comments about other people's appearance. Like, I just, it was unnecessary. I don't know, I just don't. I don't think putting other people down is funny, and I never have. So, maybe I'm just too uptight for this book. Probably, maybe I am. But I've read this book before. So obviously I've gotten through it before, but like, no wonder I didn't want to read the second book because I was like thinking about it the other day and I was like, I really wanted to read that series, why didn't I? This is why I didn't. Speaking of vampires, I read the third book of a series without even realizing it was the third book of the series. This one is called Out for Blood. The Drake Chronicles is what it was called. Recently read Heart at Stake and Blood feud. There's the first and second book. Now the third book is the one that I read in high school, year seven. It would have been like 12 or 13. As far as I remember, it was like a training camp vampire situation. So yeah, I got the ebook for that, um, for Out for Blood, and I'm looking forward to reading that. The weather is shocking. The power just went out. So now this is my only source of light. I have gotten a good chunk of the way through Angus, and I was going to... Uh, actually start physically reading a book but because the powers were out that's not really good on the lighting you know doing physical reading I'm just gonna read on my ebook so woo -woo. and I'll probably talk to you either before I go to bed after I've started the Drake Chronicles or tomorrow morning hopefully when there's actually some light <laughs> bye it's currently the 15th of June and now my internet's down so I've just been like reading um, the audiobook for an audiobook ebook for Out for Blood, and this is the third book in the Drake Chronicles series. And this like book series, it's kind of like each book has a different relationship in the forefront. So it it surrounds the Drake family, uh, which is like I don't know how many freaking brothers are there? Like seven? <laughs> There's like six brothers, five brothers. I can't remember how many. And then like you've got the sister, who's like this huge big deal. 
And each book follows like different brothers relationships. So the first book it was the friend and she ends up crushing on one of the brothers. The second book one of the brothers ends up crushing on someone else and in this book we've got a hunter and it's from her perspective and it's I believe that they're setting it up for her to be end up with one of the other brothers. <laughs> so it's like I think each book has a relationship at the forefront between each brothers and they introduce different characters as they go along. I don't hate that concept, I just think it's like a fun fluffy book that I don't really have to think much about, you know, it's just like a romance novel. I'm gonna eat my pie and read my book, so. I look like shit, but can we just pretend like I don't? So yesterday, because the power was out, I ended up reading the majority of my book and now it's 11 o'clock at night and I'm gonna try and speed through the last like four chapters. Out for blood, three chapters, three and epilogue, so. Hopefully I can do that before 12 o'clock and time to speed through. Honestly, this book is good. Like, I'm really liking the trashy. I like the, like, paranormal romance vibes. Like, this is well and truly written for a kid who's, like, just finished Twilight and is looking for more, like, content. This one's a little bit less. Oh, I guess they've been really, like, PG. The first two so like i could understand someone younger reading this this one is like a, a smidgen a bit saucier like just a little bit you know like he actually like tastes her blood at one point and it's like oh no i could kill her in a second and you know so it's like it's like a sprinkling of anything from like kind of hot but like you know not in the like i'm gonna kill you but in a sexy way it's just like a i don't want to hurt you i can't be with you thing but then like literally five seconds later she breaks down his door and is like don't ever leave like don't ever make decisions for me i'm i'm capable of that and he's like and i'm like oh my god cringe but you got a strong independent hunter woman who's willing to break down doors just so she can make out with a vampire <laughs> i'm gonna finish this and I reckon tomorrow I should film a wrap up of all of the books that I've read. It's been like two weeks since and I've read a few books. I've been bullet journaling and just like writing in some of the books that I've read. I thought I was just like talk rating them and stuff. For this childhood vlog I read I think all of them are around about two to three stars. I didn't read any like five star mind blowing stuff. So I'm planning on filming another childhood vlog with some other books that I read growing up. I had lots of fun reading books that were just kind of silly but fun. But um, thank you for watching. Hopefully this vlog isn't the worst. Um, hopefully the more I do it the better I get. And um, thank you for watching 